Hello again from Digicore Things. The first card that I designed for MECB was my original prototype card. It was a simple grid matrix card intended for either point to point wiring of components or perhaps even using wire wrap sockets like we did in our one off designs back in the 70s and 80s. In reality, I've mostly used the existing prototype card for bringing out the bus signals to the easily accessible headers, for jumping across to a traditional breadboard, for testing new circuits. It was always my intention to make a second prototype card, which would include a standard MECB GlueLogic PLD on board. This would effectively mirror my KiCad template which includes a pre-routed PLD chip on the template PCB to fast track new MECB IO card design. Currently, when using the original prototype card to design a new peripheral card, you usually need to start by wiring up a PLD or some other glue logic alternative to allow generating your chip select signals for your new design. In addition to this, also received some helpful feedback for the original prototype card. This included the suggestion that both power and ground rails should be included on each side of the prototyping area, instead of just a power rail on one side and a ground rail on the other. More recently, one of the active forum posters, Clive, shared his latest prototype card design which included the PLD. Clive also cleverly laid out the grid using three hole long strips, which allows you to insert either a 0.3 inch or 0.6 inch dual inline packaged IC with each side of the chip being connected to an additional row of connected holes for easier wiring options. Clive's design actually prompted me to review my own early prototype card design and reminded me to get on with doing what I had originally intended. Although I do like Clive's design, we all have our own preferences. For me, I wanted a PLD prototype card to have room for a zero insertion force socketed PLD, on the basis that, for a prototype card, I'm more likely to be constantly removing the PLD for reprogramming. I also wanted to retain a few rows of plain, non-connected grid holes along the top edge of the card to allow for easily mounting any desired 0.1 inch grid connectors. So, I started redesigning a new prototype card, starting off with my KiCad template, as usual. Let's take a look at what I've ended up with. Here is the 3D render of the new PLD populated prototype card, or prototype PLD card, as I've called it. As you can see, the first key feature is the PLD, which uses a zero insertion force socket footprint to reserve the required extra space. I've then positioned a bypass capacitor and a three pin header for the PLD generated chip selects, so they don't interfere with mounting a zero insertion force socket. In addition, you'll note that I now have both 5 volt and ground rails along each opposite edge, with the ground rails along each outer edge. The remainder of the card is populated with connected strips that are each 3 holes long, with the exception of the last 3 rows at the card top edge, which are a simple non-connected hole grid. I've also clearly indicated all the connected holes for both the power rails and prototyping grid via silk screened lines on both sides of the PCB. So that's my new prototype PLD card version 1, which you'll now also find on my Tindy store. I've got one here that I'm about to assemble, so let's get that done. And here is our assembled prototype card. We 
which I've inserted a PLD chip, chip select 0 for E0 to E7, and chip select 1 for E8 to EF, and chip select 2 for F0 to F7. So pretty much the high range of the I.O. bank. So what I've got here is a very simple circuit to test the PLD prototype card and show how useful it is to have the PLD on the prototype card. So here I've got a 68B21 PIA chip and one of my 8-bit LED things. And all I need to hook it up is a few hookup wires, nothing else. So I've got port A connected to the 8-bit LED thing and you can also see a pinout guide I've got next to the header which is laminated and I've glued onto the DIN connector for a quick reference. As a bonus, I'll include one of these laminated cards with any orders for the complete kit set, i.e. if you order both bonus packs with the PCB. So I've written some simple code for my 6809 CPU card, which we'll take a quick look at. As you can see, first I initialise the PIA, setting port A as an output, then I clear the accumulator and store it in the output register for port A, which will turn off all the LEDs. Then I've got a really simple loop where I just uh, load the 16-bit X register and decrement it 65,000 times and increment the accumulator. So what we'll see is the LEDs counting up on the 8-bit LED thing, if all goes well. Oh yeah, and chip select at the moment is connected to chip select zero for the first test. Okay, let's turn it on. First you'll see all the LEDs are on. This is because upon reset, port A is an input and port A also has internal pull-up resistors. So what we see is a high level on port A to start with. So let's load the test program and we'll give it a go. And we have the LEDs counting up as expected. So a very simple test that shows how easy it is to hook things up to the prototype card with PLD. Right, so this will be available on my Tindy store either as only the PCB or with optional packs to fully complete your prototype card kit set. This includes an option for a programmed PLD with zero insertion force socket. Having now finally delivered on my original intention of making a PLD populated prototype card, complete with improvements based on original card feedback and also Clive's example, I then also took the opportunity of rolling the changes back into a version 2 of the original full non-PLD prototype card. So here's a 3D render the version 2 non-PLD prototype card. As you can see, it reflects all the improvements of the PLD prototype card, but simply replaces the PLD chip with a fuller grid of prototyping space. With these improvements, I've now also updated the existing Tindy Store prototype card listing to now reflect the new version 2 upgrade. Hopefully, the improvements in the finally delivered option of an alternative prototype card with a PLD now provides improved prototyping options to help with your own MECB experimentation. That's it. Thanks for watching.